About a month ago, I did a video on the cheapest antiquarian books you could buy from me. Uh, and the purpose of the video was to demonstrate that you can buy for modest prices, especially for beginning collectors, some very interesting antiquarian books. So, back by popular demand, and when I mean popular demand, I mean two or three people have asked me, uh, probably one of them was myself. Another episode of the cheapest antiquarian books you can buy from me. Again, remember this is not a sales video uh, and all of the proceeds uh, uh, are donated to the uh, ABAA's Antiquarian Booksellers Benevolent Fund. It's a fund set up to help uh, booksellers in time of need, uh, certainly during this pandemic that is one of those times. Now, uh, before I get to the books, and remember, if you would like one of these books, email me, text me, comment uh, below, send me a message. I can only do it on a first come, first serve basis. Uh, and uh, many of the books went very quickly last time, so do it quickly. Uh, but before I get to the books, I did want to uh, plug a virtual fair coming up. It is the Brooklyn Antiquarian uh, Book Fair, the virtual version, on September 11th uh, at 12 o'clock. I'll put the link below. Uh, normally, it is a splendid and really fun affair. This year, it is virtual. Uh, actually, many of, I think almost all of the book fairs, because you can't be in person this year, have moved to an experimental virtual format, which has really become indispensable in a quick period of time to booksellers to sell things. Uh, a lot of them are works in progress. Our own organization has one for the major fairs, had one and is putting on more coming up and I'll uh, remind you about those in future videos. Uh, but the one on September 11th is promoted and organized by Marvin Getman. Uh, he has done a really splendid job in terms of the setup, uh, the ease of use, the navigability of the site. Uh, so kudos to him and you should check it out. Uh, you get in early, you can find a lot of bargains from the lowest end to the highest material. Uh, and if you miss the fair uh, coming up, uh, he does put one up uh, once a month. Uh, so I will put the link for those other fairs uh, below. But the Brooklyn one is especially going to be large and interesting with other book related events surrounding it. So to the $50 books. Uh, the first book is a cookbook. Uh, it is by Alexander Grimaud de la Reynière. Uh, Alexander Grimaud de la Reynière was a lawyer uh, during the reign of Napoleon. Uh, and uh, besides being a lawyer, he was very known for his lavish gastronomic lifestyle. He was actually, uh, I think, one of the first, if not the first, food critic uh, so, sorry, New York Times, he beat you to it by a long shot. Uh, between 1803 and 1812, he published these little almanacs de gourmand. Uh, besides popularizing the word gourmand or gourmet in the modern sense of its usage, uh, these little almanacs were really the first restaurant guides. Um, this particular one from 1811 was the eighth one issued. It has a delightful frontispiece here engraved where it says in translation, uh, the most uh, mortal enemy of uh, dinner, and it shows a cute little dog under the table, uh, or it shows a man stuffing his face uh, from any plates, uh, and it leaves, I guess, it up to the reader uh, to wonder which is uh, the mortal enemy. Uh, it is not in the best condition. Uh, the front board is being is detached uh, and the spine is quite worn, but internally it is very good. Uh, but for $50, you are buying uh, one of the first published restaurant guides, so an important book in the history of cooking, uh, and probably for the price of a single hors d'oeuvre uh, at a one-star Michelin restaurant. Book number two, this is a delightful book. Uh, this is uh, the Memoirs of Silvio Pellico or My Prisons, uh, printed in London in 1845. Silvio Pellico was an important Italian poet. Uh, he was an Italian patriot, important in the 
reunification of Italy during the period. Uh, his memoir was widely published in translation throughout Europe. Uh, this is the English translation, of course, uh, and it concerns his eight years uh, he spent as a political prisoner in the Spielberg Fortress. Uh, the Spielberg Fortress is not the home of Steven Spielberg in uh, Pacific Palisades in California, although I'm sure that's a fortress. Uh, it is in uh, Brno in the Czech Republic, uh, and it was it did house uh, many uh, Italian patriots uh, during uh, the uh, this period, uh, the uh, Carbonari, I think they called them. This book is particularly interesting for a couple other reasons. Uh, it has a book plate in the front of Hugo William Kohler. Hugo William Kohler was. Uh, uh, an American Navy commander, he was a socialite, and he was a spy. And uh, reputedly, he helped uh, some of the Romanovs escape from Russia after the 1917 revolution. Uh, he is, incidentally, or he has, uh, one of the single longest Wikipedia articles I think I've ever seen, so check out uh, the Wikipedia article of Hugo William Kohler. Uh, so besides getting a delightful book belonging to a spy, uh, the title page is very interesting. It is printed in color. Uh, this is what we call chromolithography. It is one of the early printing techniques to replace hand coloring in books, and they used various uh, color chemicals and the lithographic technique. Uh, it really was... Uh, started to become popular for printing in the 1840s, and this is one of its early uses uh, in printing a, a title page. So you get an example of chromolithography, which really advanced industrial production uh, of books. So generally a delightful a book of a popular prison memoir, an important memoir, for only $50, uh, like they used to say on the Home Shopping Network, Act fast, uh, my phone is ringing. So if you'd like that, uh, let me know. Book number four here. Uh, this is uh, the, read you the title page, A Detection of the Actions of Mary, Queen of Scots, printed in the year 1721. Uh, this is a work by the Scott George Buchanan. It was originally printed in uh, 1571, so even though this is 1721, it's an old but later edition of it. Uh, and it really has to do with the deposition of Mary in 1567 and bringing her back to England, uh, to Queen Elizabeth. Uh, and it was one of the most important works of the period. It was very political, and it painted Mary as an unhinged tyrant uh, that was descending into criminality and conspiracy. It was still popular, as you can see, in the 18th century, and you can discern most of that just by reading uh, the subtitle here, uh, The Murder of Her Husband and Her Conspiracy, Adultery, Pretended Marriage. Uh, you could throw in a half a dozen other salacious and scandalous things there. Uh, it has uh, a charming frontispiece. It is in poor condition. Uh, the binding uh, is uh, detached uh, and or unhinged, I guess, like Queen Mary. Um, so it is a perfect present for a bookbinder and a restoration project. Uh, or I guess if you know uh, or have a friend that you consider an unhinged tyrant descending into criminality, this is also an excellent book for him. Moving on here with book number four. Uh, this is the annual register. This is for the year 1788. Uh, the annual register was an important periodical of literature, arts, and politics. Uh, it was uh, established by Edmund Burke uh, in 1758 and went on continuously. Um, there are important editions of the annual. Uh, some of them uh, for the first time uh, reprinted, uh, at least in book form in, in England, the Declaration of Independence. Uh, some of them contain the first European printing of the uh, U.S. Constitution. 
Uh, this is not one of those volumes, uh, or else it wouldn't be $50, but it is uh, an example, uh, an original example of from the year 1788, and still chock full with very interesting tidbits and great reading. Uh, just to pull a few things out here, uh, at least in the state papers, you can read about the declaration of the Empress of all of the Russians against the King of Sweden. Uh, if you wanted to know how Islam, Islam was perceived uh, by the English in the 18th century, there's an essay on the character of Mohammed uh, right here. So, and finally, towards the end, uh, for book lovers everywhere, there is an extensive account of books for the year 1788. So if you wanted to know what was fireside reading in the 1788 or your New York Times bestseller list of books, uh, this makes a very enjoyable perusal of books of the period. So the annual register for only $50. Uh, and finally, this little itty bitty piece of paper. Why would paper be worth $50? Well, ephemera is very popular. Uh, but before I talk about this, uh, let's talk about J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan was uh, one of the great financiers, great American financiers, really the king of corporate finance during the Gilded Age. Uh, he is especially loved by booksellers and uh, book collectors because besides being a financier, he was one of the greatest um, collectors of arts, rare books, manuscripts, and today his namesake institution, the Morgan Library in New York City, uh, is one of the world's greatest repositories of rare books and manuscripts. If you have not been there, you should definitely put it high up on your list of must sees in life. Uh, this is his original business card. Uh, this business card came from a family of uh, Edward Phillips, uh, descended through the family, somebody who worked for him. Uh, and it shows his uh, 219 Madison Avenue uh, house, which uh, is part of the Morgan Library on 36 and Madison. So uh, for only $50, you get the original business card of one of uh, America's greatest uh, financiers. So you can buy that and flash that to any of your banking friends who work for JP Morgan today uh, to get some uh, extra respect. So five interesting things uh, for $50. Uh, again, all of the money goes to benefit uh, the uh, benevolent fund of the booksellers. The booksellers benevolent fund is always a t t tongue twister for me. Uh, and if you like this video, please subscribe. Uh, and I look forward to sharing uh, other tidbits, fun things, uh, and stories about the uh, antiquarian uh, and rare book trade. So thank you so much.